Okay, let's discuss how the Six Sigma quality approach can help us with software development. As those of us in the profession know, usually the hard way, software development often has been a sore spot in both industry and government, with cost overruns and failed attainments. Uh, I don't want to point at any particular city, but I can think of one airport that had immense problems getting their software and hardware running in a reasonable manner. Over the years, we have seen some stepwise improvements. For example, structured programming in the 70s, object-oriented programming in the 80s and after, improved documentation tools like the unified modeling language, and functional languages, perhaps the latest and hottest thing in the software horizon. I am not going to tout Six Sigma as a silver bullet, but rather, it's an approach that brings structure and focus to our improvement efforts. So what does Six Sigma, the name, really mean? In general, we refer to a defect rate of 3.4 per million opportunities. Now, that might sound a little bit confusing, because if you do the actual statistical calculation, you get a number lower than that. But uh, in the quality business, we understand that there's uh, some ability of variation to occur in our measurement system, and pretty much uh, Six Sigma gurus have settled on 3.4 parts per million as a good goal for attainment. We have to be careful when we talk about these opportunities. Remember, it's defects per million opportunities. Since those opportunities can be jiggered, if we can use that word, uh, we can finagle the numbers to make it look like our system is really better than it is. For those of you that are in the electronics business, we could look at every solder joint, we could look at every connection, we can look at every connector. Uh, the point is, as long as we are consistent within ourselves, there's no problem. It's when you start comparing how you do opportunities with somebody else that we may run into issues. And we do have an alternative to this approach. That's parts per million. And there are tables for converting that to defects per million opportunities. I, you know, I don't intend to hover over this topic too long. But the point here is to reduce the defect rate until it is vanishingly small. And that's what I think all of us that have been involved in the software business are really looking for. So, why Six Sigma? Well, you can see what it says here. It is rational. One of the changes it made over the older total quality management was a focus on the bottom line. You choose projects based on the effect on the business. In total quality management, it was exactly that. We might bring quality assessment, quality improvement to something that really didn't matter that much to the business, and that's not the case with Six Sigma. So if we have good numbers for our software development process, we can certainly apply this technique to the process. And, of course, we have measurement, and uh, I may be a little biased, but I think it makes sense. So... Here's our basic algorithm, called DMAIC. You can see where that comes from. DMAIC represents a rational approach to solving a problem. In fact, the approach will work with just about any problem that merits this level of attention. And by level of attention, I mean the need for some kind of project management to move a project forward. I'm not talking about a single individual using it, although that's possible. There's no reason it couldn't be done. We could also use some of the corrective action techniques developed over the years in various industries, such as aerospace and automotive, as well as medical and pharmaceutical. But these are often focused on specific problems rather than a more general algorithm for systemic problem solving. So examples of where I've seen Six Sigma processes used 
And some of these with strong software involvement are in office systems, accounting, purchasing processes, software for machine learning, which might include neural nets and principal component analysis, data networks, and so on. Uh, the process is general enough to be applied to all of them. So, it works because it's systematic. Some might say it works because it's simple enough everybody can understand it. Also note that I have my two of my least favorite words, iteration and reiteration, listed as well. That means we go back and forth through the process in some cases. Sometimes you learn as you move along and you go back to the beginning and start all over again. The point is, since you're learning the process, going through it again is not going to take as long as it did on the first time. And of course, once again, the focus on the bottom line keeps us happy with our company, keeps us happy with our customers, and can even keep us happy with our suppliers. So here's what this loop looks like. In the quality business, we're fond of things like the PDCA loop, Plan, Do, Check, Act. So here you see define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. It looks like a loop rather than a straight line, which is a more common representation of the Six Sigma process, and I think this one is more realistic. My experience indicates that most projects are only the beginning of an improvement sequence. We generally repeat the steps. Most listeners familiar with the concept of evolutionary operations or epochs, which was developed by Box and Draper probably 30 or 40 years ago, know how the designed experiment approach can be used to persistently iterate our improvement process as the materials and devices shift through wear and tear, changes in staffing, and so on. The point is, the process is not a static item. It's not an object. It's exactly what its name says it is. It's a process. So the same thing applies to software development. I'm going to go through it one more. In this particular case, we're starting with the process, and then we'll go to the product. I took a quick look, and I thought it might be interesting to see how the Six Sigma approach matched up with the Agile Manifesto. And here you can see the, the basic comments. I cited the origin of these particular comments, which is agilemanifesto.org. Basically, uh, Six Sigma is not yesterday's news. You know, some people may remember it started in the early 80s with companies like Motorola and, and so on. Uh, the fact of the matter is it's a lot of living. Uh, in some cases, it's uh, transformed into something called Lean Six Sigma. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't care what the name is as long as we're improving our processes. So uh, I'm, this particular approach shows how Six Sigma still has relevance, even in the world of Agile and extreme programming and all the other things that have changed in the last 20 years. Okay, notice this early and continuous delivery of valuable software comment. This reflects an interest on the bottom line, experimentation, and feedback, which are at the very heart of a good quality process. We help ourselves when we let our customer and suppliers help us, and we reciprocate with a better process and a better product. Anytime I've worked in a company where we were in isolation from our customers, we paid the price for that isolation. It's just not worth it. They have to be part of the process. And I think that's the key uh, insight in the Agile Manifesto, and there's no reason that that would be incompatible with the 